On this table, we're going to compare viruses and cells. Um, and cells doesn't just include bacteria, it also includes eukaryotic cells like animal and plant cells. So let's start with the structure. The structure of a virus um, is that it is made of a protein capsid and nucleic acid. So the protein capsid is the outer covering. It's made of protein. And inside the capsid, there are, there's either going to be DNA or RNA, which is made of nucleic acid. Viruses will have either DNA or RNA, but never both. Inside of a cell, well, um, the outside of a cell is made of a lipid bilayer. Um, that makes up the cell membrane. They might have a cell wall as well, um, depending on what kind of cell it is. And there's DNA inside of the cell. Sometimes that's inside of the nucleus, sometimes it's not. There's also other organelles inside of the cell, things like ribosomes. And if it's an animal or a plant cell, things like mitochondria or chloroplasts. Now let's look at the size of the virus and the cell. Viruses are very, very small. Um, and cells are going to be still small, but larger than viruses. Rep in reproduction, um, the virus has to reproduce by invading a host cell, and it sort of takes over, and either, through go either by going through the lytic or the lysogenic cycle, it makes copies of itself. So it needs a host cell to be able to produce more viruses. It can't do it on its own. In a cell, um, they'll either use mitosis or meiosis, or sometimes they'll use asexual reproduction like um, binary fission or something like that. But generally, they'll use mitosis or meiosis. Now, the genetic code for a virus, like we said, will either be DNA or RNA, but never both. It'll be one or the other. And then inside of a cell, you have mainly DNA, and which that might be inside of a nucleus, it might not be. Um, but they'll also have some RNA, but the main genetic information is in the DNA. For growth and development, viruses don't grow. They stay the same size um, throughout their entire life, um, well, if you could call it like an existence. And so they don't grow or develop. However, cells will grow and um, develop, they'll grow larger until they get too large to be able to supply um, the cell with what it needs, and then at that point it'll divide into two new cells. How they obtain and use energy, viruses actually don't use energy. They don't have any of the machinery like mitochondria to be able to process energy through cellular respiration. However, cells will obtain energy either by consuming food or through a process like photosynthesis where they make their own food. And then they use the energy created or consumed for cellular respiration, which happens inside of the mitochondria. As a response to the environment, um, viruses, most people would say, don't actually respond to the environment. However, you could say that they do because they can go dormant for a time in unfavorable conditions. Cells definitely do respond to their environment um, in a lot of different ways, depending on um, <clears throat> the concentration of fluids outside of the cell and inside of the cell that are going to try to compensate for their conditions so that they can survive change over time. Um, the only changes that will happen in viruses happen through mutations, mistakes that are made when the virus's RNA or DNA is being um, transcribed and translated. And so you might actually get some variation through mutation, but it's very, very slow. And then cells are going to change both through growth and mutation. So there, um, there's going to be a lot more changes happening inside of the cell. The individual cell can actually change in its lifetime, um, whereas with a virus, all that can really change is the offspring of that virus. Um, it won't actually change itself. Diseases caused by viruses include HIV, the common um, cold, the flu, which is influenza, the H1N1 virus, that's swine flu, these are all caused by viruses. Um, diseases caused by bacterial cells include strep throat, um, gangrene or tuberculosis, there's sort of an endless number of bacterial infections. Anything you would take antibiotics for is bacterial. 
Um, and then I want you to add one more thing to the bottom of your page. These diseases that are caused by viruses and cells are treated with two different things. If it's a virus that's causing the disease, it'll be treated with a vaccine. And a vaccine actually has to be a precautionary measure. It has to be done before you get sick for it to really be effective. Um, and what happens in vaccines is you get a shot that has um, either a dead form or um, a weak form of the virus in it. And so you're pretty much giving yourself the sickness, but not enough to make you feel sick. And so your body gets a chance to build immunity um, so that if you do get that virus, it has what it needs to be able to fight the virus off. Um, and remember, there's nothing that can kill a virus, so the vaccine doesn't actually kill the virus. It just helps you build immunity against it. If it's a disease caused by bacterial cells, um, it can be treated with antibiotics. And what antibiotics do is they kill all of the bacteria in your body. Now, some antibiotics are more effective for certain types of bacteria, but generally, they'll wipe out any kind of bacteria that they can find. Um, and that means that even the good bacteria that you have in your digestive system um, and the things that you need in your body will also be wiped out. And that's why when you take antibiotics, it's so important to eat probiotics, things like yogurt that have some bacteria culture so you can replenish um, the bacteria that's been lost in your digestive system. So antibiotics will kill all types of bacteria, not just the type that's making you sick.